Terry Conroy, you have a llama with you. Tank? Tank. Tank. Miss Tank. Miss Tank. At least she's not a take. Miss Tank. No, you're not a mistake. No. Oh, sweetheart. Yes, 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 yes. Oh, yes. I mean, what a day to wake up and get a kiss from a llama. That's how I start every day. That's how you start every day. Tell me about Miss Tank. Well, Miss Tank is about four years old. She, uh, I have 18 llamas on the farm, and she is the diva of all the llamas. Everyone, well, she looks like a diva. She, everyone gets out of their, or her way, um, but she's a very kind, very gentle llama. She goes into libraries. She's, she does a lot of work with children um, and people with developmental disabilities. Uh, she's just a very good girl. We, she's trained and calm. Uh, you know, you know. People say I told people we're having a llama on this show. They, oh my gosh, a llama! You know, they're mean. And I says I don't think they are. We've had alpacas on, and I don't think they're that. And I can't say she's mean at all. Well, she's a love. Most people say, oh my gosh, they spit, and they do spit. But uh, so do alpacas. But they don't like to. So spit. do humans. So do humans. Yes. <laughs> and the reasons a llama might spit are the same reasons I might spit. Um, if, you're, if they're being hurt or taunted, um, sometimes if I give a shot with a really big needle, she might try, you know, a llama might try to spit at me. But they don't like to spit. It makes their mouth taste terrible. So they'll avoid it at all costs. Okay, good. Uh, but no, they're not, they're not mean. The few that might be mean maybe were never handled and they're being misread. They don't know how to be around humans. They don't know that we're not going to hurt them. But... Um, most llama owners work with their animals, the same with alpacas, so they're pets, really. Now, you are involved in a gala, it's called, the Greater Appalachian uh, llama, llama and, and Alpaca. Alpaca Association. And tell me, uh, this is really incredible, you're having a meeting in the area, is that correct? Well, every year, I'm a member of gala, and every year we have a conference for four days, uh, and we fly in the best llama trainers, the best um, llama vets. Well, we call them camelid because the camelid family is llama. Camel, as a camel, right? Camelid. Camel, a camelid family and has camels, llamas, alpacas, um, vicuna, and guanaco. So, oh, I haven't heard of those last two. Yeah. So if we bring in veterinarians that work with these animals, and that's where we learn. I do most of my own vet work, so do most llama and alpaca owners. But we, we do have vets, too, but we learn all the up-to-date medical information about llamas at the conference. We, we meet with some of the best trainers. Um, judges for llama shows come and work with us. She's getting a little lower here. And, uh, <laughs> she, she wants to talk in the microphone. But um, it's, it's a four-day conference for us, and, and it's, this is the first time it's been in the Albany, New York area in many years. Usually I travel to Pennsylvania or Connecticut, Massachusetts. So this is fun. We're at the Century House in Latham. Can anyone go? Well, you have to be a member of GALA and have a, a, a strong interest in uh, llamas and alpacas to go. But of course, anyone can go to the conference. But on Saturday afternoon, uh, the conference is November 7th through November 10th. And on Saturday afternoon, November 9th, from 1.30, we kick off with a llama parade open to the public. Oh, no at the Sentry House, and then from 2 o'clock to 3 o'clock, we have a very special workshop for people who think maybe llamas are for them, or alpacas. How much space do you need? I mean, can, I mean, obviously you live in a condo, you're not going to have a llama, but uh, is this, like, do you need to live on a farm? Well, I live on a farm. Most people do live on a farm, and you don't need as much space as, say, horses or other livestock. The books all say you can put six llamas on an acre. If, and mine will all go into like one corner together. They're a herd animal, so they, my husband has to mow the pasture. They don't even put a dent in it. Um, <laughs> because they don't eat a lot. Well, except Tank is the only exception. She likes to eat a lot. Um, I should have brought a carrot for Tank. <laughs> but you know, a lot of alpaca farms and llama farms lease animals. So you could actually, or you can buy an animal there and board it there like a horse, although oh. the board is a lot less money than a horse. So even people who live in a condo can own a llama or an alpaca. Um, and this way they go to the farm they keep it at and they work with it or go for walks or they can take it off the farm and beyond. Now you can use her fur, is that correct? Yep. On a llama and alpaca, when it's on this, 
beautiful stuff on the animal. It's called fleece. And once we shear it, we shear them once a year, um, then we call it fiber and we spin it into, well, I spin it into yarn, so do most people, um, or send it to a mill to have I, I would imagine it would make a beautiful uh, sweater. Beautiful. Oh, and oh, hang on. in here. Where are you going? <laughs> We're almost done. Um, they're hypoallergenic animals in that they don't have lanolin like sheep. Uh, so a lot of people can wear alpaca and llama garments that can't wear, pardon me, that can't wear um, sheep wool. They can wear uh, clothing made out of llama and alpaca, and there are some beautiful, beautiful, it's a very drapey uh, kind of. It looks beautifully soft. Now, your farm, you, you do have a farm. Can people come out there and uh, uh, get uh, educated? Or? Absolutely. Well, I do hold adult llama walks. We have 30 acres of trails that it's not like a trek where you climb mountains. No. Come here. Be a good girl. Um, they're nice trails, so I hold adult llama walks. People, anybody from the public can come and join in. You're not laying down. You want to take a nap? You have to go lay down. Um, well, we're almost done, sweetie. I do. I do have a lot of groups with uh, children and adults with developmental disabilities come and volunteer at the farm or learn how to work with the llamas, and they just love it. I have field trips in the spring, and um, and we take our llamas out into the public. To, we take them to elementary schools, to libraries. Um, but yes, I, I do have people out at the farm. You do need to make an appointment now. But. Well, if you're interested in learning about llamas and perhaps bringing a group out or to learn more about it or maybe to, you know, adopt a llama, who, who knows? You, you never thought when you watched the show that you might want to adopt a llama. They're, they're wonderful. She's been here for a while this morning, and everybody's had their picture taken with her, and uh, we've been petting her, and she's just sweet, and she hasn't spit at anybody yet, so, and I don't think she will. So anyway, she's been giving everybody kisses. Um, what's not to like about getting a kiss from a llama? Thank you so much, Terry, and thank you for bringing her in today, and uh, she's over in Altamont if you'd like to learn more about it. It's uh, Once Upon a Farm, and it's on the web, and you can also go to my website and find out more about it. Thank you so much, Terry. Great to see you.